So how to understand the delta impulse function? And this is often confusing when we're talking about sampling. So the best way to think of it is to think of it as a very narrow rect function. So the, the width of it is delta and the height of it is one divided by delta. So the area of this is equal to one. And then we look at it as delta goes to zero. So as delta goes to zero, this becomes infinitesimally narrow and infinitely high. And that is the way to think about the delta impulse function. So let's think about why that's a good way uh, and what does it mean when we write a number next to a delta function, especially when we're doing sampling. Well, let's look in the frequency domain. So in the frequency domain, the rect function is a sync function. That's through the Fourier transform. And more details on this you can find in videos in the description below this video. And the width of this is equal to one divided by delta. And the height equals the area of the rect. So that equals one divided by delta times delta. So the height equals one. Now let's think about what happens here as delta goes to zero, this sync function spreads out. These crossing points here go out to infinity and this becomes a flat line. Okay, so that's what we're getting for a delta function. We've got a, we more commonly draw it as a delta function like this with a, and we put the number one next to it, which sometimes people think means the height of the delta function, but actually it's the area of the delta function. And then in the frequency domain, it's a constant value here with a value which we write as one in the frequency domain. This is a Fourier transform of the delta function. Uh, and I'll call, and I write this here, delta t. Okay, so uh, what does it mean when we have a different number next to here? What do we do when we are sampling? So before we talk about sampling, let's first think about something interesting we see here, and that is that the energy of the delta function is infinite. We can see it in the frequency domain because when you take the square and then add up the area, well, you're doing it from negative to infinity to infinity, and this is a straight line, so this goes forever, so the energy equals infinity. In the time domain, you take the square of the amplitude and multiply by the base, taking the area, so for the energy, that is, so you'll get one on delta squared times delta, which is one on delta. And as delta goes to zero, that goes to infinity. So the energy of a delta function equals infinity. It's just an important thing to, uh, to realize. So what, do we, what does it mean? It's, I mean, it's not a real signal in practice, is it? What does it mean when we sample and we use it to sample? Well, let's think about having a continuous time signal like this, and we're doing sampling. We talk about multiplying by the delta function. So we're multiplying by the delta function. The height of this, uh, this is at time zero here. Uh, the height of this function here equals two at that point. So that height there equals two uh, in this, for this signal here. So when we multiply those things together, we often draw a delta function of height two. What does it mean? Again, the actual delta function has infinite height. Don't forget, we just draw it with a height is related to this number. What does that mean? Well, again, let's go back and think about this picture here. So if I zoom in on this here and try and sort of draw a zoomed in version, uh, we've, we're looking at a square, a rect function, which now has a height of two divided by delta and a width of delta. And that's all that's going on here. Okay, that's why we write a two. We think of it as a good idea to think of it like this. You're just putting a two divided by that. It's still going to have infinite height when delta goes to zero. Uh, I'll, maybe I'll put that in here as well. It's still going to have infinite height, still have infinite energy. It, everything's the same, but it's now multiplied by two. So in the frequency domain, you now draw it here with a value of two in the frequency domain. Okay, but that's what the number means. If we draw a number next to a delta function, we sometimes draw it to be twice the height in our drawing. It's just a representation to remind us that it is multiplied by the two and that the two came from this sample here. Uh, if you want to then convert it into a discrete signal and store it in a computer, well, you're just taking that value of two and putting it into the discrete time delta function. And the discrete time delta function is much more 
directly defined. So this is how to think about the delta function. This is what it means. It does have an infinite height, but this is what it means when we write numbers next to it. So hopefully that's given you more intuition and how to understand the delta impulse function. If it's helped, uh, give the video a thumbs up, helps others to find it. Uh, check out the description below with other videos and a, a web page which has a fully categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos.